Hi, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for joining me. Um, again, we're going to be reading out of the book of Matthew, 19th chapter, uh, talking about marriage and divorce. Before we start, uh, we will say a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come again and read your word. We're praying for your divine wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. We're praying that we hide the word in our hearts so we don't sin against you and that we walk accordingly to the word in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I'm going to dive right into Matthew 19. Um, now, it came to pass when Jesus had finished these sayings that he departed from Galilee and came to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. And great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came to him, testing him as they always did, um, and saying to him, hoping to probably catch Jesus into something to where they can use it against him, probably. Um, so, and they and they were saying to him, "Is it?" They asked him, "Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason?" He uh, answered and said to them, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be drawn to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, the, therefore what God has joined together, let no man separate. They said to him, why then did Moses command to give a, a certificate of divorce and put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery, and whoever marries her, who is divorced, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, if such is the case of the, of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. So I guess that's what the disciples thought. Now, verse 11 says, but he said to them, all cannot accept this saying but only those to whom it has been given. For there are eunuchs, I think I'm saying it right, who were born thus from their mother's womb. And there are eunuchs who were made eunuchs by men. And there are eunuchs who have been themselves eunuchs from the king for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to accept it, let him accept it. All right. Now let's discuss what all of this um, actually, what all of this actually means. Now, in uh, Matthew 19, it begins with Jesus leaving Galilee behind for the time, uh, for the last time and heading toward Jerusalem. Now, after entering the region of Judea, however, Jesus and the disciples cross over the Jordan uh, to the east, likely into the Jewish region of Perea. Large crowds continue to follow him, and Jesus continued to heal those who are or who come to him. Let me see if I'm recording this because I'd be messing up on this. All right. Okay, great. So I am. All right. And while east of the Jordan, some Pharisees find Jesus as well and come to test him with a difficult and divisive question. And they already knew. They already knew what they were doing. Um, the disciples didn't have any good intentions. Or not the disciples, pardon me. The um, Those Pharisees, they never had any good intentions um, when asking Jesus questions. They, they were more or less doing that to possibly, I, I don't know, like just to get something to use against Jesus. It's probably what they were, you know, what that was all about, probably. Um, anyway, so verses one and two, um, it tells us that Jesus left and went into Judea and beyond the Jordan River 
Um, they would cross over Judea further south near Jericho. This seems to be what Jesus did. Um, and they also uh, referenced that in Matthew 20 and 29. Large crowds followed Jesus wherever he went. Many sick people came in those crowds and Jesus cured them. Verses 3 um, some Pharisees came with a question about Jesus. They did not ask it because they wanted to know. They asked it to test Jesus, to get, see if they can get him caught up with, with something, I guess. I don't know, like I said earlier. In that society, a man had the right to divorce his wife. She had no right to argue against his decision, no right to divorce him either. Um, however, in some cases, she could take the husband to court. Um, verses four through five, commentary is saying that Jesus did not argue from the opinion of other teachers because there were some follow teacher of, I think it's Shemaiah, Shemaiah, something like that. And then another teacher, um, Halia, where they taught different things. But Jesus is saying that he did not um, argue from the opinion of other teachers, right? They taught other they taught different things as to how to handle that, um, the whole marriage and divorce thing, and what would be the reasons um, one should divorce or marry. Um, but Jesus is saying here that he did not argue from the opinion of other teachers. Jesus went back to God's original intention. God created both men and women, and marriage was one man and with one woman. Uh, the two of them would become one by by sex. Of course, they would become one body. Now, marriage binds a husband and a wife together. In the beginning, there was no question. In the beginning, there was no question. Jesus, God did not make marriages for divorce. That was not what was intended in the beginning. And it still stands to this day. Um, there's just no question for it. And, and Malachi says, Malachi 2 and 16 uh, says that God hates God hates divorce. Now, I, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on that a little bit because this is a very topic that can just go on and on and on and on and on. Um, I do personally believe God would not want you in a relationship where you're losing yourself, where you, somebody else has complete control over your life. Somebody is abusing you, abusing your children, even. That's not healthy, no whatsoever. And I really don't believe that that will be something God will want you to be part of, right? Um, but I mean, you you have to pray about it. You have to uh, um, ask God to lead you in the right direction and how to handle that. Um, you know, even though he hate divorces, God knows he do. It's said here in the word he does. He also knows that, you know, we're not perfect. And um, he's he's that God. Like he, he, he didn't intend for marriage. He didn't intend for the marriages between a man and a woman um, to end in divorce. But we know that, you know, where there is sin because of, Jesus dying on the cross for us, where sin abounds, so does grace, abounds even more. So you will be forgiven. Don't, I don't want nobody to feel condemned if they had to, you know, make a decision to get out of the divorce. Um, but again, that's between you and, and God and how you want to handle that. But I will say, if you find yourself in an abusive relationship, marriage, you need to really like, like I would just say, just get out because it's just not healthy. You know, you don't you don't want anybody beating you, putting their hands on you. And likewise, you shouldn't do it to anybody. And you certainly won't want anybody to kill you based on them putting their hands on you. Someone who tells you that they love you, you know. All right. So um, verse seven and eight commentary says the answer that Jesus gave did not satisfy the Pharisees. So they asked another question about what Moses had said. Moses did not approve of divorces either. Um Divorce was never, like like we said earlier, was never part of God's perfect design. Moses dealt with the situation at that time um, because of the heart and the hard heart of those men. 
um, that a man must write a letter to, of divorce, then he should send his wife from his house. She was then, I mean, the commentary says here, and I'm not really sure. The commentary says she was then able to marry another man at that time. I guess if it was done that way, she was able to marry another man. After that, the first husband must not marry her again. Now, what they're saying here is if he gives her a letter of a divorce of her husband and, you know, put her out and she go off and she marries somebody else and then they either one or two, um, they divorce her with a letter of divorce or they die, they pass away. She cannot go back to her first husband because they said during those time it was considered an abomination. I don't know. Uh, verse nine says the only proper reason to divorce a wife is if she had had sex with another man. And, you know, yeah. If that was not the reason, the man should not marry another woman. If he does, then he would be guilty of adultery. His second marriage would be against God's law. And and likewise, um, woman, you know, you know. I know for me, in my first marriage, it was it was infidelity, and it, he, you know, he committed the infidelity, and then he turned around and and divorced me, and married a woman, another woman in the church. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, um, I don't know why I inserted that in. I probably shouldn't have, but anyhow. Um, so the principal, the and then my second uh, marriage. You know, I married this person for selfish reasons. I should not have married this person at all. It was for reasons, and it would, you know, I'll tell you, I'll, you know, I'll be very honest with you why I married this person because I was living in sin. I was, I was saved, but I was living in sin with this person playing house, and I told this person, I'm not gonna, I'm not doing this with you anymore. You know, I'm, I'm not the type to be this guy, that guy, you know, you're here. I just will make it work. And because I'm not going to be sinning anymore. And that's why I married him. So I didn't have to live in sin anymore. Right. Some might say, well, hey, that was the right reason to marry him. But not really. You know, not really. Just don't sin. That's the lesson that I got from that. Just don't sin. Because everything in me was like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't marry, but I did, and it was it was it was not a good, it was not a good marriage, not at all. Um, but anyway, so the principle um, is that marriage is for life. Therefore, a second marriage, while the first husband and I end up divorcing this guy because this guy, we were separ we separated so many times, it was crazy, and finally the last straw, like he had did something or attempted to do something to me. And I, I know I couldn't take him back. I, I know because seemed like every time he would leave and I let him come back, his behavior got progressively worse, 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 worse. And that last time was it. I, I, I that was it. So um, we separated and this man was living a, a, another life with, with somebody else for two years. I'm married to this person. He's in a full-blown relationship with somebody else, which I believe he was in a relationship with this person before he even married me. But he ended up marrying me, but he would go back and forth with her. That's that's, that's what I think. He may, he may say that's not the case, but that's what I believe happened. But anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I'm living in, in, in the, in the place that we were living together and, and I'm paying all the bills and, and, um, well, for a while, I think he was paying the car payment, but then he stopped paying the car payment. Well, no, the car payment, we got into, the car got into an accident. The car got totaled. So there was no need to make any car payments at that time. And in fact, I think he had stopped making the car payments by then. But anyway, I digress. I always do this. I always get personal and I don't know why. But anyway, um, that, 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 that man was living with somebody else for two years. And I'm like, you know, we need to get a divorce because this, you know, he's like, well, I'm not divorcing. He didn't want a divorce, but yet you want to live with somebody. And then I'm like, no, this is not God's plan. This is not God's will. Like, no. Um, 
And so he said, well, we'll, well, I'll pay for the divorce. And then he went from paying for the divorce to, well, we'll go half. And then he went from going half to not wanting to pay at all. So I had to pay for it. Perhaps he didn't think that I would pay for it, which is why he took that route. But I, I paid for it and um, I divorced him. Now, uh, again, I digress, but let me let me jump back into what I was saying here. So we must not forget that God can forgive, you know, he can forgive all of our deeds that is not of him. A person who remarries after a divorce still has a duty to God. Um, like everyone else, that person must repent and choose to follow Christ. So don't be condemned if you felt like you, you know, didn't want to get out of a marriage, but you had no... You just, you just didn't know what to do, right? Don't feel condemned. Just know whatever you do, just just stay in God, okay? Verses 10 through 12, how, how Jesus answered the Pharisees, surprised the disciples even. Marriage was a more serious matter than they thought, right? They had not realized that marriage was for life because they too was under, like they was under the Mosaic law. So a lot of before Jesus made them their disciples, they was a lot of them was living under those laws, right? So in God's law, there was no way out of a marriage. Um, now this is a commentary, and sometimes these commentaries they be on point, but sometimes they may not be on point. Like a lot of times, I know I'm not on point, but so some of these I have to be like, oh, I don't know, should I read that? Should I share that? I don't know. But um, if the marriage failed, that was no reason for a divorce. The wife's wrong acts did not, the wife's wrong acts did not give the husband a proper reason to divorce her. And likewise, I guess. But no, back in these days, the husband could divorce the wife. The wife couldn't divorce the husband. Uh, perhaps it was best never to marry. And so to avoid all these troubles, the disciples are saying, you know, well, just, hey, we must not even get married. Um, and I don't know, some of the disciples may have been married, may not, I'm not sure. Jesus replied to the disciples, what they said could be true for some people. It would be better not to marry than to have a divorce. Some people decide not to marry because they, you know, they want to give their lives to the kingdom of God, which is a great way, a reason to, um, to not want to marry because you can devote all of your time, most of your time to God. Well, it's different when you're married because you have a husband, you have children, you know? Um, so my best decision or what I'm going to share is the best decision in anyone's life is to put the kingdom of God first, be about God's business, um, building the kingdom. We must not forget that God can forgive all of our, our sins, all of our deeds. Like I said earlier, um, but a person who remarries after a divorce still, 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 still has a duty to serve God. But repent and choose to follow Christ. Romans 5 and 20 says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So you're saved, you repent, you have been forgiven. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I went on a little personal um, journey there. I appreciate your guys' um, listening ear. God bless you all. Have a good night. Bye for now.